Okay, um, it is Tuesday, May the 5th, and um, if you didn't um, watch last week's video, then stop, go back and do that. That was an introduction to this earth science we're going to be doing. Uh, the notes were called to drift or not to drift, and there's a PDF copy of all of them um, on our website. Uh, but we worked through some together last week. We started talking about continental drift and plate tectonics. Those are two really common theories um, about why we have so many of the features we have on our on our surface. Um, the most important part of this is understanding that the Earth is divided up into layers. And um, we talked about that last time. And I think the best example would be a, a peach. And if you um, think about a peach, um, you have the, the uh, pit of the peach, the, the inner part, and that would be like the inner and outer core. And then you have the, the fruit part, which would be like the mantle, about the same approximate size. Then you have the, the outer part of the fruit, the, the skin, and that would be like our crust. And then the fuzz would be like our atmosphere. But the, the outer part is the important part to us. That's where we live. And um, we call it the crust. And the crust is broken up into several parts called plates. I don't know why the word plates, but that's just what the scientists have called it. And, uh, and there's these plates actually sit on top of the mantle and they move around very slowly. But uh, the crust is about 50 kilometers thick under the continents and about 15 or 20 kilometers thick under the ocean. So it's, uh, this is a lot of rock we're talking about. And there's no spaces between the plates. So they, when they collide together, you know, you have things like mountain building or one plate going under, under another, which is called subduction, or you have plates pulling apart. And as soon as they pull apart, literally the weight of the world is pushing down. So you've got magma coming from the mantle and below, and you have eruptions, or you have plates scraping along beside each other. And, and that causes earthquakes and, and other features. So um, the theory behind this is called continental drift and plate tectonics. There are two different theories. Alfred Wagner was one of the, the main guys to come up with earlier the theories, and it's been built on. So um, I don't want to get too much into this. We talked about this last week, but it, those two terms are really, really important. Okay. Um, moving along here, let me just, um, we talked about this map. We worked our way through this. We watched a video. We talked about the coastline fitting together like a puzzle. Um, it doesn't prove anything, but it's some pretty good evidence that there um, maybe the continents was the continents were joined in, into one giant supercontinent, you know, millions of years ago, millions and millions of years ago, maybe. We don't know about the time frame. There's, there's a lot of this um, debating that. Okay, so this is where we left off. Um, we do that. We know we're motion. The plates are spreading apart. But again, this is really slow, like um, somewhere between two and ten centimeters a year. Okay, really, really slow movement. Um, the interaction of these plates, they cause all kinds of things on the surface. So three common plate interactions. That's what we're going to look at today. So we don't have to write this down just yet, but there's converging plates. That's where plates come together. Now, remember, there's no space between these plates. So it's not like they take a run at each other. These plates are already pushing on each other, but because of forces behind them, right? And uh, we'll get into things like convection currents and the reason that these plates are in, in motion, but plates pushing together, um, on each other are, call, are, call, are called converging plates. That's where they come together, okay? Um, diverging plates, that's where plates are moving apart. And then you have this um, other term, I don't know why it, it changes, but they're called transform boundaries. And that, that occurs where uh, plates slide past each other. And maybe it's because they transform the landscape so much. Um, they they kind of just scrape and they um, we move very slowly, but they also get caught up, right? So remember, this is rock on rock. This isn't nice smooth marble. Think of a mountain sliding past each other because that's really what's happening below the surface, right? And it, and it gets stuck and, and all of a sudden the pressure builds and builds and builds and builds and then it moves like a meter all at once. And that's where you get these crazy earthquakes, okay? So this part you can write down. Convergent boundaries. Those are plates, uh, plates colliding. They cause mountain building, volcanoes, and subduction zones. And we'll get to that stuff later, but you can write that point down. Now, if I'm moving too fast, that's okay. Just pause the video or write the notes and go back and watch the video. Um, there's a PDF form in the notes too. Okay, so if I look at this here, um, this, don't worry about the lithosphere. Think about this little green thing here. This is the ocean crust. This is the plate underneath the ocean. And it's squished because literally the weight of the ocean is pushing down on it all the time. So you've got this compacting plate. And you might think, well, mountains are really heavy. They should be compacting our continental crust. And they are heavy, but 
ocean is so much more. If you've ever carried a bucket of water, you realize how dense and heavy water is. And if the ocean is, you know, eight kilometers deep or five kilometers deep or, or deeper in some places, all that water is pushing down and it compresses the ocean plate. So it's thinner and more dense. When the ocean plate collides with this continental plate, a continental crust, the heavier plate gets pushed down into, um, into the lithosphere and then into the mantle. And then there's no room for it to be here. So there's tons of friction. Friction causes heat. Heat causes melting and then expansion and even more pressure and even more melting. And you have all this magma waking its way to the surface. And that's what causes eruptions. Our volcanoes around here, like Mount St. Helens and Mount Baker, are, are caused by this process. And the process is called subduction. We'll get to that later too. Okay. The second one is called divergent boundaries. That's where plates are spreading apart and that causes huge cracks or rifts in the Earth's crust. Now remember, as they move apart, all of the weight is pushing down. So as soon as there's a little bit of a crack, all this pressure from below pushes up and you get eruptions. Okay. So this is a, a kind of a complicated diagram, but if I'm looking right here, we have one plate moving this way and one plate moving this way. And that's because of these things called convection currents. And if you've ever boiled spaghetti or boiled rice, you've seen this, okay? So warm stuff rises to the top where it cools and then it sinks back down and then it gets warmed again and then it rises and then it cools. And when you're boiling spaghetti, you get the circular boil or boiling rice, you get this. And scientists believe that happens in the mantle, slower, of course, because you're dealing with liquid rock rather than liquid water and it's much more dense. But you get this, these convection currents and these convection currents pull on the on the on the crust and they move it in different directions. So eventually, um, this plate's moving this way, this plate's moving this way. You're going to get cracks and you'll get eruptions occurring. And the Mid Atlantic Ridge is a really good example of this. If you were to look at the ocean floor and have some pictures of that, just uh, taken by sonar, you have all of these different ridges from eruptions that have occurred in the past. Okay, the third type of reaction or third type of interaction is um, it's called transform or transform boundaries. And that's plates scraping or sliding past each other. And that generally causes earthquakes. Okay, this is a total weird um, little animation here. Um, but what you can see is a highway that was once together and you got one plate moving one way and the other moving the other way. And, you know, this pressure builds up for tens of years hundreds, thousands, you know, long, long term. And then all of a sudden, boom, it slips and it moves significantly. And that's where these earthquakes happen. And that's where a lot of devastation happens. Okay. So those are the three interactions. Plates come together, converging, they pull apart, that's diverging, they scrape past each other, that's transform. So those are the three important keys for today as you're writing things down. Okay. Subduction zones. I'm just going to get very briefly into this. And then next Tuesday, we'll talk more about subduction zones, but I'm going to challenge you to Google it. Look at some YouTube video on this. But our coastal volcanoes, such as Mount Baker, were formed by a process called subduction. The process is a very slow and takes hundreds or thousands, perhaps millions of years, right? Long time. The theory is that when an ocean plate and a continental plate collide, the ocean plate is forced down into the mantle. Because the ocean plate, remember, it's, it's, it's heavier, right? And it's, it's thinner and it's more dense. So it gets pushed down into the mantle. There's no room down there for it. So that causes tremendous friction and heating and melting. Okay. This is because the continental plate is thicker, right? And less dense. And the ocean plate is thinner and more dense. The ocean plate is literally under the weight of the ocean, which compresses the plate, creating a much thinner, denser plate. So as the thinner ocean plate is forced down into the mantle, there's a tremendous amount of pressure and friction. The friction results in enough heat move this out of the way, to melt the ocean plate. Now, I know I'm moving quickly, but that's okay, because you can pause the video at any time. You can write the notes and then come back and watch the video. You can just listen to the video and then write it down later, however, however it works best for you right now. Okay? Moving on here. The result is uh, this melted rock under intense pressure. The liquid rock wants to expand, but there's little room to do so because when things change state, when matter changes state, especially from a, a solid to a liquid, it wants to expand and there's no room for it to expand. So that causes even more pressure. The magma finds its way to the surface because a rock doesn't bend very much. If you ever tried to bend a rock, you know, it doesn't work. So all this pressure causes little fissures and cracks. Okay. So the magma eventually makes its way to the surface and, and then an eruption occurs. Okay. 
So what happens to the magma on Earth's surface? I just told you well, where we live or Mount Baker. Um, due to the intense heat and pressure, it erupts on the surface. Okay. This creates a cone-shaped feature called a volcano. We've seen them before. You can see it on uh, a regular day, especially maybe even today you'd be able to see it out there. You see Mount Baker. Local examples are Mount Baker, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, Mount Shasta, all along the west margin of our North American plate. Okay. Over time, many of these eruptions occur. Move myself out of the way. I just keep getting in the way. And the volcanoes increase in size. Okay, so uh, here's a subduction zone diagram, and I'm going to get way more into that next week. I'm going to actually start with subduction zones, but here's us over here. Here's us in Vancouver, well, wherever, right here, you know, kind of right in there. There's Mount Baker down in, in Washington. So you have this ocean plate being pushed underneath our continental plate where we live, and that all of this melting happened. This magma waste, it makes its way to the surface, and you get all of these volcanoes all along the Pacific Northwest. It's actually called the Pacific Ring of Fire because there's so many um, volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean. All right? So there's another part of a video here. I may or may not get to, uh, to watch that. It's that same narrator, um, but that's another animation. So we're going to end it there. So make sure you write those notes. Watch the video quickly. And if you have questions, come see me and we can chat about this. This is my favorite unit, and I'm really sad that we have to do it this way. It doesn't feel like it's very effective. So we'll, uh, we'll get into some more interesting things as we go along. Okay, take care, everybody.